moving on i would like to invite ms rachna chopra the recruitment advisor south india and sri lanka ms rachna holder uh, Ra rachna holds pgdcs degree in computers from osmania university she is a focused and committed committed resource having 25 plus years of experience in areas of university recruitment development of new business zones visa process counseling education management etc ma'am we hand over the session to you hi rachna I think universities are responsible for training the experts and leaders of the future. We take young people who have got vision and ambition and we realise their potential to achieve their personal best, to hit the goals that they aspire to hit. Our university has been here in Manchester in one place. Ma'am, am I audible to you? Alicia, you're audible to us. Probably she is facing some issues. Okay, yes. request the participants to kindly give us some minutes Alicia, we are coordinating, right? Sure.
Uh, hi, good afternoon. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I think there was a glitch somewhere technical, I must say. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, understand, uh, you know, we, are we talking to the students or are we talking to the team? How, how uh, who would be the audience? Uh, and, you know, I just had a few things to present for the School of Architecture. Um, sure, so, ma'am. So I just wanted to know, uh, like, who do we address? Ma'am, 80% of the participants here are students who are mainly in the from the second to the fifth year of architecture. Perfect. And there are a couple of young professionals who have started working as architects in the industry recently. Sounds good. Uh, so uh, so I, I'll start then? Sure, sure, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, do I have the screen share rights here? Yes, ma'am. Please share. You have. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Institute and the I think universities are responsible for training the experts and leaders of the future. Mum, we cannot see the screen and yet. Young people who have got vision and ambition. We are, and we are not able to, to see the screen? No, 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 ma'am. How does one the potential to achieve their personal best? to hit the goals that they aspire to hit. A little while ago when you were sharing the YouTube she, uh, yeah. page, it was visible. It's the early days of the 19th century. Okay. We can trace our roots back to 18th. Oh. How do I present? Mum, uh, there's a, an icon called present now. If you click that and then you select uh, a tab, then they will... No, in fact, I've selected a tab. Uh, yes. And then selected the same tab that you want to present. Yeah. Can you see this now? Mm, yes, ma'am. Uh, just a second. Yes, yes. Your screen is visible, ma'am. Please continue. Yeah, uh, this is a welcome address by our uh, Vice Chancellor. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the Manchester, Manchester Metropolitan, Metropolitan University virtual, virtual experience. We, we invite, invite you to explore our wonderful, wonderful campus, campus at the heart of one of the best student cities in the UK. Our, our campus, campus is a modern, modern engaging space, space in the heart of Manchester. Manchester. It provides opportunities for you to learn and grow in state-of-the-art teaching, learning and creative facilities. We've committed over £360 million to our campus redevelopment programme to create what we think is the best learning environment for you. And we continue to transform our spaces, adding new facilities, new studios, new laboratories all the time. But this campus isn't just a space to visit, it's a home to our university. We're about 38,000 students and some 5,000 staff. It's a place where you can work, learn and live. It's a place that inspires. We hope you enjoy our virtual experience and seeing the place that we call home. We also look forward to welcoming you in person to experience our wonderful campus. Um, hi everybody. Um, uh, that was our welcome note from our Vice Chancellor, Professor Malcolm. Press, and I'm taking you through the Manchester School of Architecture. Uh, first of all, th thanks a lot for, uh, you know, making us part of your discussion today. And I proudly present our School of uh, Architecture for you all to see. And, uh, you know, and in case we have any questions coming our way, we would love to take it forward here. Uh, in fact, Manchester School of Architecture is a joint offering by University of Manchester and Manchester Metropolitan University. And it is, um, you know, more than 100 years old as a collaborative effort, and it is ranked 11th in the world 
as per QS rankings and ranked second in UK for their academic excellence. So any student who's um, you know looking forward to be a part of School of Architecture find this uh, department very enriching. So I'm going to share with you uh, what this university has to offer as a joint collaboration, how the students are going to get benefited by the joint offering, and of course, uh, what is the requirement to uh, be a part of the school, in, be it in terms of portfolio, the kind of research options, and uh, you know uh, the timelines for applications and and all that. So I'll quickly run you through the school itself. Um, so uh, kindly, uh, Alicia, just let me. Uh, you know, you tell me in case you can see my screen for the sure, sure. architecture right now. Can you see it now? No, no, ma'am. I think you can present it again once, please. Okay, okay. Yeah, can you see it now? Just a second, ma'am. Yes, we can see your page. Okay, thank you so much. Um, this is our Manchester School of Architecture, and this is what it says. Um, as as I just now mentioned that Manchester School of Architecture is a collaboration between Manchester Metropolitan University and the University of Manchester, and it's currently placed 11th in the world as far as QS 2021 architecture rankings. So uh, we are having more than 1,000 students over 80 countries, product, you know, having the best of the, um, you know, options what they can choose from so we offer courses from bachelor's till master's so uh, in case any student is keen to take up uh, the program i would take you through what who we are now uh, once we are trying to suggest that we are trying to be a part of architecture the first and foremost thing which comes to mind is accreditation are we accredited Yes, we are uh, accredited with the RIBA and Architectures Registration Board and the Royal Institute of British Architecture, which is recognizing each and every student, uh, you know, coming out of a thing and any student who is fulfilling the requisites becomes a registered architect of UK. As far as the, um, you know, Collaborations are concerned. The collaboration is with one of the league universities, that is University of Manchester, and their students are from over 80 countries coming and studying in here. It is in the heart of the city and anything to everything, whether be it uh, architecture or land, landscape history of Manchester, uh, we can uh, you know, say that it is, it is more uh, unparalleled in terms of what we can benefit to the student. Now, coming to our courses, uh, the courses what we are offering to a student we are having a, a portfolio of courses which can range from bachelors to masters the most popular of uh, one being of course the masters of architecture and then uh, we are having architecture and adaptive reviews architecture and urbanism we are having research degrees which can be in terms of mphil and phd masters of landscape architecture these are the major courses which we are offering under this department now where as when we talk about Masters of Architecture, this program has got uh, a offering for about two years. Uh, this is a REBA Part 2 program. So anybody who's wanting to be uh, uh, ARB and REBA approved would essentially take this program. And this is uh, having more than 240 credits coming a student's way. Now, once you're going to the page in here, you can see that, uh, you know, this, this program has got a certain showcase of um, you know what the student can ac actually expect these are the kind of the works which a student has done after reaching in here and it is um, you know main issue comes in when the student is wanting to see how they can make an application here now masters of architecture is requiring a student to have a certain set of uh, credentials now we are wanting a student to have a letter of intent, which is very important, uh, or what you call it, a personal statement, which is actually showcasing what the student essentially is. You know, his, uh, you know, interest in uh, dissertation subjects and why your reasons for wanting to study MSA is required, and a minimum of 35 pages of digital portfolio of work has to be submitted, which is uh, going to be in the file uh, online you know, which you can share the link because in principle, when you're trying to submit it as a part of the application, it might 
not go to, going to the size, but your, what should your portfolio contain? Ideally, it should include a table of contents which has information regarding the duration of each project that you've undertaken and in which year it was, if it was academic, and if it was non-academic and you had a chance to work outside your academics, then you, are, you have to give clear-cut indication of some design process, what you have followed, the design strategy that you have followed, the resolutions and technical strategies while you were uh, in your year of practice. At least two referees are required, um, which has to be from the year three tutor. So we find the year three and upwards a crucial, uh, you know, I would say journey for a student when they develop in their bachelor's. And, and of course, if at all you have done a project which is post course completion, then you need to have the employer's reference. Now, when you are saying uh, reference, it should not just say that I know a certain person and uh, I found it, it should actually, uh, you know, elaborate your technical excellence found in the student, like in case there's a professor who's trying to recommend, they're trying to say that in a certain project, this skill set was utilized to get this thing and we find the student very innovative in these areas. So that kind of reference is what we are looking for. And the students who have, um, you know, taken this program, um, the entry requirements are, you know, you need to have a, a upper second class degree, that means uh, usually it is 60% and above. And uh, of course, an IELTS of a 6.5 with no bias less than six in any category. So uh, this it becomes an essential requisite for an international student to prove their English credentials. And then um, as per the ARB prescription, the, the, when somebody is wanting to get known as the architect in the UK, they are defining three parts. Um, that is normally two university degrees, that is part one and part two. Um, and the third one is a focused on professional practice. Now, part one and part two is nothing but your bachelor's and master's. So bachelor's, what you are doing in India, that is bachelor's of architecture, would quantify for part one. And the part two goes in for your master's of architecture, which is a 240 credit point program. And the third one is the professional pro practice, which is your projects. So seeking any students seeking uh, architectures, architects registration board, you know, um, eligibility, have to have all these three parts um, you know completed to be called as an architect in the uk context okay so uh, it is it is uh, anybody who wishes to know more about it should look into this link that is arb.org.uk i'm sure most of you would be knowing this um, now coming to how much does it cost for each year of your study it is it is um, 25500 per year and it is 240 credits are the credits that you're going to complete. Now, are there any additional costs coming in your way? Yes, it is. Um, it is if you're going to purchase certain equipment, yes, it is going to cost you there for your equipment. If a student is going to go on, um, you know, architecture based trips, which are actually conducted by the university time to time, then that becomes anything which is additional on a student's choice. So, um, so this this in principle uh, is for one course that is masters of uh, architecture now uh, everybody would wish to know what is the course overview now if you are trying to take this course what is it that you are um, you know going to get these are the features anybody who is wanting to have this program would 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 be going into the course curriculum and how the teaching methodologies are conducted. This is a very detailed uh, studio opportunities which a student gets, which is which is having a collaboration of um, you know day-to-day -day classes plus uh, you know assignments bi-weekly, weekly, and also they are having to present a ten thousand word dissertation uh, towards the end of uh, the project, which is going to go into the design thesis methodologies. So this goes in as a part of the entire application process when you're going to take this up. So while you're taking this course, there is uh, one more course which is uh, on the similar lines that is Masters of Landscape Architecture, which is again a two-year offering. And it is it is going to be um, uh, for the students who are wanting to be on the same lines, that is Masters of Landscape Architecture. So it is, it is not only accredited by the uh, ARB, but it is also having the Landscape Institute, uh, you know, I would say recognition, which is, which is making them, um, you know, a professional 
uh, landscape architect when you are trying to uh, you know be a part of international federation of landscape architects you are uh, having that licensure to be a part of it okay uh, so it is one of the best schools in the world the msa is constantly uh, you know uh, treated as one and it is accredited by both landscape institute and the world and by worldwide international federation of landscape architecture uh, architects so any student who wishes to work anywhere as a architect has to uh, be a part of it now what does uh, it offers you you know it is it is a two years full time conversion route and it runs from uh, you know 120 credits each so um, so anybody who's having a two is to two degree when i say two is to two degree that is 58 percent and above in the bachelors can get on to this course um, and it is it is going to be year wise they have to fulfill 120 credits this is again a two year program you are having uh, an access of um, upon graduation first and foremost you will be getting a joint certificate which includes each institution's crest and awarding body title and you will be able to extensively use library and specialist works workshops at both U, uh, uom and mmu and um, you know you are having a uh, access to dedicated MSA advanced digital design team, which is actually trying to give you the state of art workshops and tutorials, uh, plus software and whatever is required to, uh, for you to get into the licensure modes. So uh, there is a research uh, led uh, ateliers alongside with this. So we would want you to explore this and go, go into the live sessions of MSA at time to time. And it is, um, you know, a two-year full-time program now if at all a student is not wishing to invest two years uh, for taking a degree can they take a pathway or a route to reach to the second year of mla or mr the answer is yes the student can take up a program like architecture and urbanism and architecture and urbanism as a program is a 120 credit point program which is actually trying to take a student through the course overview which is trying to again jointly offer you the course it is jointly offered by both the universities it is in internationally engaged through conferences exhibitions competitions and publications and it has got two start dates that is september and january and this program is asking you to have a portfolio of uh, around 20 pages instead of the 35 what what we have for um, uh, masters of architecture this program is asking you to give a uh, you know, portfolio of about 20 pages and what it should essentially contain. It is, um, it, the portfolio should be rigorously read on and should employ an appropriately sized and legible font. And it is, it has to have a clear and uh, easy comprehension of what you're trying to present and what it should actually present is, you know, um, one should graphically and secondly sell your interest and ambition and capacities so what they are trying to what faculty is trying to understand there is what is your essential being i mean what is your essential uh, you know uh, synopsis as a person or as an architect or as a landscape architect so uh, the duration of projects are very important the kind of projects that you've undertaken be it academic or otherwise you are supposed to showcase your project in a very right light and and short introductory statement uh, of uh, to you and your practice in front of the portfolio this has to be uh, i mean everything is very size driven please understand that unless until um, you know uh, of your application a 4000 word character uh, you know statement of your application is where you're trying to give the synopsis of your application and trying to say that it's not just a regulation um, you know uh, i would say uh, you know, applying by filling an application form, trying to give the bachelor certificate, but it is essentially asking you uh, what you have in you as an architect or a, as a land, landscape architect, because unless until you are able to showcase in a different light of being a creative and innovative, um, you know, person who can, who is going to change the view of the landscape or uh, you know has got a thorough knowledge of the geospatial requirements of a certain area unless until you're showcasing that plus in you your application may not hold water here so you are supposed to present three pieces of work with one project or piece of coursework showing in detail so the coursework which is the piece of work which is very close to you 
please uh, highlight that and this should include a short written summary demonstrating significance of each piece of work according to you what you feel is important about that work your portfolio can include examples of work undertaken in an employment context so it, it is not essentially that you know you heard you would have done an individual project but you would have been a part of a group project which is also okay to present and then you are going to get on with the um, you know presentation to say that what additional you can bring on table when you are trying to uh, be a landscape architect in uk so in principle what is the basic entry criteria you are supposed to have a upper second class undergraduate uh, equivalent international degree so that is 58% and above and um, you are supposed to provide a digital portfolio as a part of application process. Um, if had you been in UK, you could have given a physical copy across the table, but you have, as you are an international student, you are applying. So you're supposed to have a digital copy of your portfolio there. And you need to have an IELTS of a 6.5 with no bands less than 5.5 in any category. Now, architecture and urbanism uh, is a one year program and it is costing 21,000 per year. And, um, you know it is it is uh, it is actually the two years uh, comes between 240 credits to 300 credits so the first year here they are trying to cover for 180 credits so if you are going for a lateral entry for a second year so this program will make you qualify for the second year of uh, you know validity here so any student who is wanting to break your degree into two and try and study uh, architecture and urbanism first and then get on with the masters of architecture can definitely do that because in principle you are allowed to have um, this as a program come your way right so um, the other program which which has been created very recently keeping in view the uh, industry requisites is um, adaptive reuse so they are saying that every uh, country in principle is trying to have uh, the reuse or trying to recreate something which is already there without uh, you know dismantling things so they are trying to say that the structures and the locations are made to evolve and have new uses being accommodated and these uh, new uses are very important for everybody to uh, say so the program leader of uh, you know architecture and adaptive reuse has to say this um, Hello, Hello, I'm, I'm Sally, Sally Stone, Stone and I'm, and I'm the, the Programme program Leader for the MA Architecture and Adaptive, Adaptive Reuse. Reuse. I've, I've been, been practicing, practicing writing about and teaching Adaptive, Adaptive Reuse, Reuse interiors, interiors and Architecture, and Architecture for, more for more than 30 years, years. And, and I'm, I'm the, author the author of a number of books, books including Rereadings, Undoing, Undoing Buildings and, and Interior, Interior Information. information. These, These all look, all look at, at the manner, manner in which, which the existing, existing environment, environment is remodeled and reactivated. And the, and the MA Architecture, Architecture and Adaptive Reuse will study the existing environment and we will look at the manner in which it can be reused, remodeled and adapted in an active way rather than reactive. And therefore, and therefore we will, we will be, be very proactive in the way we approach the subject. subject. Adaptive, Adaptive Reuse is quickly, quickly becoming, becoming the defining, defining architectural, architectural practice of the 21st century. century. This, this is, is not just in Western, Western countries, countries, but also, also in China, China in, in India, India, and, and in the South, South Americas. Americas. That, that idea, idea of the quality of place, of, place, of contextualism, and, and understanding, understanding the existing situation, and the benefit this has for the society and the people who live there, there is becoming more and more important. important. Almost, Almost half, half of architectural work, work at the moment is about, is about adaptive, adaptive reuse. reuse. And, so and so students, students of architects, architecture, architecture students of interiors, interiors students, students of development, development in general, whether, whether this is tourism or the or hotel, hotel trade, trade, from, from geography, geography and history and, and archeology, span this, this program, program is relevant, is relevant to, to all of them. them. It's, it's also, also relevant to qualified architects, architects and, and interior, interior designers, designers who, who may not have studied this during their own qualifications and therefore, and therefore to come, come back, back for a year, year or a year, year full-time full or two, two years part-time part to really study this course and this subject, subject intensely could be extremely beneficial. beneficial. Students, Students on the, the MA Architecture, Architecture and Adaptive Reuse, Reuse Programme will, will study many, many different, different aspects, aspects of adaptive, adaptive reuse. reuse. We will, we will look, look at 
Uh, uh, approaches, approaches and attitudes and towards, towards reuse. We'll look at conceptual ideas. ideas. We'll look at uh, regulations, regulations and law. And, and, and this, this will be through a variety of different projects, projects from, from academic, academic writing, writing through a dissertation, dissertation, through model making, through, through the design and the redesign and the adaptation of existing buildings. buildings. Students will work in groups and work singly. We will work on specific projects and we will work on more general ideas about adaptive reuse. Manchester is a city that's evolved from, from the, the massive, massive industrialisation when it was once the, described, described as the workshop of the world, world. And, and it's evolved into a post-industrial city where the reuse of existing buildings has become central to the evolution of the city itself. And the Manchester School of Architecture is situated in the middle of Manchester. It uses the qualities of the, of the city, city itself, itself to sustain it, to understand, understand the practices, practices of, of architecture. architecture. If you'd, if you'd like, like to find out more about the programme, programme why, why not come along to an open day? day. We, have we have them in person, in person and we have them virtually. Or email me. So um, this is a programme of the future. So if anybody is wishing to take this programme, this is a one year full time programme. And, uh, you know, they are having the research come their way and uh, the methodologies are given in. You, anyone can just uh, get in touch with our professor here uh, where you can, uh, you know, get to know more about what this course is all about and how it can redefine future uh, when you are trying to take this course up. Now, coming to the re uh, research degrees, um, we are having two types of research on offer. That is one is a student who is trying to uh, take our master's in philosophy and then the other one is, um, you know, your PhD. So this is a very open, uh, it, it is, uh, you know, it looks beyond the technical design and the processes. What it essentially wants, um, you know, from a student is, uh, you know, you're trying to give your research synops synopsis. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are two groups which you will be following. That is the Manchester Metropolitan University with the Manchester School of Art, of uh, Art Research Centre and Manchester School with the Manchester Architecture Research Group. So if, if it, it is an interdisciplinary program, which is going to take you through the things here. So I would suggest you to look through this, um, you know, what can possibly um, attract you towards the PhD of architecture or you can um, how you are going to find a supervisor because unless until you find a supervisor you cannot formally lodge your application and you know you can also see the kind of profiles of current phds ongoing and uh, why you should do research that's one for, foremost question here so if anybody is wishing to do um, you know a phd in architecture needs to go there and because it's a collaborative effort you will find um, that it is it is a three year program it is going to have um, you know, uh, the basic requirement is a bachelor's, but you are wanting to have a high grade master's along with how to go for making an application. So, uh, you know, while you are taking up this program, you are having, uh, you know, certain scholarships come your way and you are supposed to write to the uh, professor for or faculty for the next processes so uh, in principle anybody who's looking for research can go into there and in case somebody is not wanting to take up you know a phd in architecture but wants to go in for interdisciplinary thing can go in for postgraduate school or uh, you know research center which is going to offer you multiple areas or avenues which you can possibly select one of these to um, apply for your research degree okay so uh, in principle, uh, this is in a nutshell what we have to offer as a school of architecture where the students are having all programs starting September. The applications for September 2022 are ongoing. Not only uh, this, but uh, if at all, you know, you are wishing to take up, um, you know, courses uh, in January, then you are having the course of architecture and urbanism come your way. In case you are trying to uh, get across credits from the current course and you want to enter the bachelor's yes you can do that once you are having an approval from your school and sending the uh, credits what you have completed in the current degree and 
get across credits for what you have done under the UCAS norm. So any student, to every student who is wishing to have a degree of architecture is made sure that they are getting the resume robust in terms of getting it an accredited degree, trying to make you a part of the consortium, which is going to get you the projects, which is coming your way. Being an ARB uh, approved, uh, you know, architect means a lot when you're trying to be in UK and Manchester being one of those hubs where architecture has literally thrived. So Manchester Business School has got so many projects coming their way via the Arch Architects Consortium, which a student immensely gets benefited from uh, the university. Now, in principle, I would want to just give you, uh, you know, brief about what university does to the student when you are joining Manchester Metropolitan University. Manchester Metropolitan University takes care of all international students coming their way and they handhold them uh, through the enrollment till the time they finish their degree. And when they enroll, the international admissions is taking care of it. But thereafter, when they are, uh, you know, once you're enrolled, then um, the early career cell takes over. Now they are going to make your resume look robust and they're trying to take you through workshops and trying to make you engaged in your part-time assignments and engaged in your full-time assignments in your graduate immigration route. So, uh, you know, Early career cell is one of the largest cell which is on campus at Manchester Metropolitan University, where we say that the learning is there for you to explore and work. So when you are learning a certain degree, we are making sure that you are getting a certain assignment or a work coming your way, which is going to hone your skills, hone your skills in terms of not only acquiring the degree, but also trying to practice it in, in the similar lines. So that is where our early career uh, cell is zealously working towards trying to make the student engagement complete, wherein they are trying to get some assignments, some projects for the students, which are going to hone their skills as their architects. Um, and, and, and the future architects are created while uh, they are a part of the community here. So uh, I would also quickly would want to ask if they have any questions, which I can answer right now. And um, uh, probably, uh, you know, can take a call off there. So quick, a five minute uh, or a 10 minute question answer. If somebody has can just, um, you know, raise their hand and ask or maybe write a question in the chat box. I can answer that right away. Um, so, um, Alicia, uh, yes, yes. do you suggest something here? Yes, uh, students, I'll give you a minute to please type down your questions in the Q&A. While, uh, ma'am, there were a few questions that we got at the time of registration. So mm -hmm. can yes, I throw them to you? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay. One question is like uh, the students want to know what are the employment prospects uh, post-graduation like from your university? What type of work fields the students go to? That's a fantastic question. In fact, that's what I was trying to emphasize in here. When we are trying to take up a degree at Manchester Metropolitan University, we're making sure that the student is getting one and first and foremost an accredited degree, which is making them a part of Architects Consortium. Now in UK, there's, there's a, a norm wherein all uh, projects which are related to architecture related projects are coming to the consortium first. Now consortium recognizes the students who are trying to pursue the degree, which is in line with the ARB. So when a student is trying to take a degree from MMU, definitely the project percolates down to those students who are taking the degree there. So the projects come in first to them in essential terms. Now, what does uh, our early career cell do? Our early career cell is connecting the work offerings with the student uh, profiles. So this gets mapped by our early career cell and they're, they're engaging workshops wherein the students are having a platform wherein they can showcase or have an interview uh, platforms design. So the student is given an ample opportunity where we are making sure that the student who's trying to learn architecture would be getting a project related to architecture and not working in a Starbucks or a, a you know coffee shop there. So it is it is that is what essential term is. And every student is gainfully engaged at all times. That is a confirmation which is coming in, wherein more than eighty four percent of the students are uh, getting recruited over, overall, while they're studying and beyond beyond uh, in their uh, you know duration there. Okay, okay, ma'am, that's great. Uh, ma'am, one more question we have is with respect to the scholarships, like they want to understand how do they work? Okay, uh, see, when I'm talking about courses, there are three levels of courses, that is bachelor's, master's and research. 
right now architect uh, architecture as a department is a joint offering between university of manchester and manchester metropolitan university now university of manchester is essentially very high priced university whereas manchester metropolitan university has suggested that you know any meaningful student who's wanting to come across uh, we are trying to reduce the fees and trying to get the things done so uh, consensus was arrived at where the fees was reduced according to the university of manchester requirement and we froze it at 25500 per year wherein i mean i would say it is it is a marginalized fees so the scholarship as a title does not exist uh, you know uh, that is where you know they are saying that in principle there is not a default scholarship which comes your way but there are certain things or certain projects that is given to a student when they are on board it where they might possibly you know can you know get something as a remuneration there rather than getting in a scholarship uh, as a part of the offer so as a part of the offer i'm afraid uh, architecture as a department does not have it but in principle uh, yes that would be the thing okay okay yeah. ma'am so ma'am continuing the same question uh, like on the lines of the same question for phd like mm -hmm. if uh, like you already spoke a little about it saying that uh, for funding opportunities also we can contact the respective uh, faculty for ongoing researches right. so for, for for phd how is it different ma'am see phd again uh, if a student has submitted a proposal which is in sync with some project which is going on live and some industry has invested in it so what happens uh, it is all about the funds which a department has so uh, it is uh, case to case basis the student might get funded you know okay. because in principle a phd is a paid phd as far as uk is concerned so uh, probably uh, the fees if it is non funded comes in about 20000 per year but what happens if a student is having a uh, you know proposal or a research uh, you know area of interest which is already uh, interest area for some industry so they invest in the students research so that they can come back with the outcome so that way the student can be lucky enough to get a um, i would say funding so okay, okay. what what the student essentially does to get the funding is uh, first and foremost they are trying to see the research areas where the things are work, uh, ongoing work is going on and mm -hmm. they align their research interest according to the ongoing work being done so okay. when when the ongoing work which is having funds come their way and the professor uh, says okay to be the guide then obviously the funding discussion happens between the student and the professor and they okay. they kind of decide among themselves as to what funding they can come with okay so ma'am this is valid for both full time and part, part time phd uh, part time phd international students can't take because it's a visa okay. norm one has okay. to fulfill the things um, okay okay i could see a question pop up regarding yes. the intermediate uh, gap between intermediate and degree correct ma'am you want me to read the question yes please just a second okay so ma'am uh, pranesh is asking if there is any requirement for the number of year, gap years between intermediate and bachelor in architecture as in no. do you require work experience no no see in principle what we require from a student is the student should have uh, have finished his uh, bachelor's of architecture which will make him uh, complete the reba part 1 requisite okay so uh, if the student had a gap between intermediate and the bachelors then of course the counselor while they are presenting the visa file they might explain it there but in principle does uh, university require an explanation answer is no the only thing uh, you know university is interested is in their beautiful portfolio and the profile and uh, very less number of backlogs uh, <laughs> in fact uh, you know manchester uh, you know as a offering does not accept more than six backlogs uh, and they don't accept the first year uh, they don't consider the first year backlogs but from the second year until fifth year you are supposed to have not more than six resets okay. so okay. this is what is uh, what we are interested in looking at actually okay this was uh, interesting because in the previous session we did ask this question how important is the grades and the performance of the bachelor's uh, degree yes. at that point Yes. so that way okay students any more questions from your side okay ma'am one question was with respect to masters in landscape architecture or uh, adaptive reuse like that you spoke about uh, i i'll just float it to you if you can throw some light on it mm -hmm. uh, they are asking if does having a masters uh, degree in 
say any of these specific fields limit the job opportunities in uk or it, it no. is not like that no no it does not limit see you have to understand two things very uh, categorically you know when you are trying to take a masters of architecture it's a two years program which can range between 240 credits to 300 credits okay but when you are taking a one year program you are trying to have one niche area come your way wherein you are trying to be a specific uh um, you know i would say expert in that area but it does not limit you as an architect it will not limit you but you are going into specifications like for example if there is a mechanical student he has done something into designing that doesn't mean that he'll just go for work in design he will he is a mechanical engineer in principle but he has got a additional uh, skill set of design same thing goes good for adaptive reusage when you are trying to take up something which is which is uh, taking care of the current issues in mind you become an expert in that but your essential being a architect does not go away from you but if you are wanting to have a, a registered architect tag in uk then i'm afraid you have you have to finish this 240 credits at least to make a tag come your way right so you are taking the second year that that is why it is giving you the lateral entry so the one year program that you take in the adaptive reuses can always go into the second year of uh, mr which is making you the rebar thing so what happens you're trying to kind of break your study wherein you are trying to take 180 credits in the first year of course uh, the first year equivalent is 120 credits which get transferred but you are in principle not losing the focus it is just that you are specializing in certain thing and okay. it does not limit you in that uh, i would say skills that you are having something added on rather uh, you know in that areas okay ma'am uh, we have one final question yes, uh, Prith pritha wants to know for the september intake when should we apply the applications are on and uh, in principle uh, the applications of uh, department of architecture are vetted by both the professors that is university of manchester looks into this and manchester metropolitan uni looks into this so architecture applications take at least a month to mature so in case you are keen to apply for september kindly submit your application right away because it will take at least a month for the application to mature to the outcome and at times what happens when the portfolio is not very clear but it is interesting then the professors might pick up the phone and talk to the students as to ask asking them as to what essentially was the spirit behind which they have created that portfolio and what was the essence what the student wants to convey so there can be a possibility that a student gets a call directly from a professor at times uh, you know where uh, you know they need to actually know what they have presented uh, essentially so i would say uh, between one month and uh, you know i would say 40 days are required for the application to mature as far as architecture as a department is concerned so if there is somebody who is interested to look for september kindly apply as soon as possible because that is requested okay okay ma'am uh, i think i must say that this was a very informative session and i'm sure a few of us have got motivated to apply uh, because you rush uh, you ran through it in a very structured manner so thank you so much for thanks for uh, your time and thanks for having having me here uh it pleasure was all mine thank no you no so problem ma'am we would love to have you again sometime yeah, yeah. sure any day thank you thank you so much thanks for your thank time you. bye bye thank you ma'am bye okay students uh, we will now take a lunch break which will be till 1:15 uh, we would request you to not log out and uh, definitely be a part of the next session which is going to be very interesting again because it's a session with the university of liverpool uk so kindly uh, come back and rejoin by 1:15 thank you RVTH Akin completing his postgraduate MA studies in advanced architectural design at the Staffordshire Architecture Class Frankfurt being a registered architect in Greece since 2000 he became a partner at BNK Plus then worked for VMX Architects after working for OMA that same year he later founded the architecture and research laboratory A3 Lab Frankfurt and has been planning and releasing projects around the world since then 
this work has been published awarded and exhibited widely his research teaching and lecturing experience include include the abdk your work to you damstead au telaslonki university of telasi blitzfield university of applied sciences international islamic university malaysia columbia university and stafford architecture class he was a visiting professor at Lebens American University and senior lecturer at Raffles Design Institute Shanghai today he is a senior lecturer for digital design program director for MA in architecture PTT lead in architecture at the University of Liverpool and HEA fellow and a registered architect in the UK ARB and Greece TWE his eighth book sustainable retrofits was published by Rotledge in June 2018 we heartily welcome you sir for the today's session and the floor is open to you we would like to hear more details about the architecture programs and the research that your university has been doing for the architecture welcome to you for the session sir thank you so much uh, very mm -hmm. happy to be here with you it's the first time we we meet and i hope in the future uh, this will continue and hopefully i will be able to visit you over there uh, next year when the pandemic is completely over i'll i'll share my uh, screen with you Uh, so I can start my presentation. Can you see the screen? I suppose yes. Just a second, sir. Yeah. Yes, it's no. visible. Fantastic. So, as um, kindly introduced, I'm uh, Asterios Agathidis. I'm a senior lecturer at the Liverpool School of Architecture and uh, MA program director and postgraduate taught program lead um, in the School of Architecture. Today I will give you an introduction about um, our postgraduate thought program, so all our masters, and uh, an overview of what possibilities you have. This is our building. This is the architectural building. You see, it's a Georgian terrace. It's the oldest Arabic accredited school in the UK since the 19th century, and this is our new extension. Uh, this is the, the the new building. Here you can see the extension to the Georgian terrace in the 80s. This um, Extension oh, is actually yes, yes. an international competition which um, was won by O'Donnell and uh, Tumoy, and the construction will start actually this year. So if you join us, you will probably be able to, to, to you know, to follow the construction process, which is going to be quite an interesting um, experience. This is our main hall. This is the, the Sterling Gallery. This is where all main events take place: reviews, presentations. Uh, tutorials and partly there are some working space on the top floor uh, and um, can you put it on a slide mode please excuse me uh, can you put it on the slide mode oh it's so, not yeah that's weird um because i thought it is hmm one second let me yeah. do yeah. some i'll, I'll reshare it um i will share the entire screen then probably that's better okay so now you should be able to see my screen yes just a second yeah so i'll go full screen now and please tell, tell me if you can see the presentation yes professor okay so this is the school which i was talking about this is the extension and this is the sterling hall which is the main um, center of the school now at the moment So our undergraduate programs include the BA in Architecture, which is a three-year Part One ARB Riba accredited course, and the Master of Architecture, which is the ARB Part Two. Now, obviously, in in uh, in India, I understand that your five years are your bachelor, right? So it's more or less the same thing, though. Here, the bachelor, which used to be called diploma a few years ago, is now consisting out of these two programs. The BA in architecture and the master of architecture which is an undergraduate masters right now we have also the postgraduate master programs which is what i'm going to talk about mostly today and we have the MA in architecture the MSc in climate climate resilience and environmental sustainability in architecture the MSc in building information modeling and digital transformation and the MA in sustainable heritage management So all these programs are one year long programs they are postgraduate programs that means they are um, they require a, a fully 
completed uh, bachelor studies. And then um, why, why people do them? Uh, I mean, people do them to get a better job, to deepen the, the skills and, and uh, knowledge in, in postgraduate level. And some of, of the people who choose these programs want to continue in a PhD. We accept people with different backgrounds and different um, degrees, mainly it's architecture degrees, but we have also people from engineering, in, interior design or interior architecture, landscape, and other related fields. And usually these are people who have had already some working experience in architecture and want to specialize in one of those fields. Um, and indeed, you know, it's, these programs are very successful in providing jobs. Uh, this is Vankatesh Kalidos, he's also from India. He, he just graduated actually a few months ago, since our last semester started uh, in January uh, due to the pandemic. He just finished and already got the job uh, actually just a month after his graduation. He's now working for a um, great office um, in London eight associates um, after completing his uh, CRESTA, his Climate Resilience uh, Architecture and Sustainability Masters. So there are a lot of jobs opportunities at the moment, you know, by, by studying here in the UK, you all get a, a two years working permit and a working visa. And now a big issue is that many of you think that, oh, I'm going to do a, a BA accredited, I'm going to do a master's which is going to be accredited by the RBA. Well, these accredited programs, the MRs and the BA, are undergraduate programs. That means if you have already five years of education, you, by doing the MRs, which is the undergraduate master's, you would be going back to year four. Uh, that's why I would not recommend it to you because it would perceive you be basically repeating knowledge. So the right programs for you are the postgraduate masters, which I'm going to talk about. And then there is another pathway to gain uh, RBA and ARB accreditation. Actually, the ARB is the, the real uh, professional body. The, the RBA is more of a um, let's say honor um, association. The actual, uh, the actual accreditation body, which provides you the, the title of an architect in the UK, is the ARB, the Architecture Registration Board. Now, there is an international pathway. So if you're coming from India with five years uh, education, you can submit your portfolio, and then uh, you can get RBA accreditation. Nevertheless, you're not requiring an RBA accreditation to work in the UK, right? So people with international degrees, uh, can work here in, in practices, but you cannot be called an architect, but you might not need to be called an architect. I am registered in the ARB. It's always obviously a good thing to have, but once you start working here, or if you complete your, your master's, uh, you can always proceed the pathway of accrediting your, your degrees. And it's actually a much cheaper way because um, the accreditation costs about 1,700 pounds, whether a master's costs about 20,000 pounds. And again, even if you would get a part two, you would miss the part one. So there's no point um, coping to get accreditation by doing a master's, right? Now we also offer um, postgraduate research programs, which is the PhD, Doctor of Philosophy and MPhil, Master of Philosophy. And again, some of you can proceed in those degrees if interested. Now let's, let's talk about the people. It's me, uh, I'm the program director of CMA and the PGT lead. Um, there is Juliana Kay, she's teaching history and theory. Christina Malathuni, she's teaching history and theory. Dr. Fei Chen, she's a urban design. The team of Cresta, the sustainability program is uh, Steve Sharples, David Cho, Anilia Mohamed Burkabasi, Jiang Tao Du, and then BIM is Adonis Saitar, who is the program director, Spiros Straboravdis, me again teaching a couple of modules there. And the heritage management uh, program, we have Ada Al Saloum, Shoman Balido Baye, Jamila Quatrone, Nick Webb, and uh, Mary Shepherdson. Now, these programs, as I said again, they last one full year. They are uh, three semesters long. So we have one semester starting in September, one semester start starting in February, and semester three, which is uh, your thesis semester, starts in June. All of, overall, you're getting 180 credit points. All of those programs have mandatory and required modules. These are modules you will have to take. 
and optional modules electives which you can choose from. And indeed, we have a, a huge variety of uh, modules. Now, the MA in architecture is the most flexible program because it allows you to choose from all other modules, from all available programs. Um, the other three masters are focused in one particular topic. So the sustainability masters has mostly um, uh, mandatory uh, modules such as um, uh, heritage management and BIM. But they also offer some optional modules. As you can see at the end uh, uh, of, of the two semesters, you have also the opportunity to choose a thesis. And we have three types of theses. Now, I'll go quickly through the modules uh, and then I'll, I'll also show you words from, from these modules for what should students really produce. We have virtual environments in architecture design one. By the way, the blue is, is the MA in architecture. You see, basically, it covers mostly all available modules. Cresta has um, the sustainability uh, masters is green, BIM is um, purple, and then MATMA is red. And then optional is, you know, the optional modules require the required one. So you can see more or less what is expecting you on, on each program. So we have virtual reality, we have design one, which is studio module, history and theory of the 20th century, parametric fabrication one, urban design, climate design for sustainable architecture, environmental assessment techniques, BIM theory and practice, BIM enabled sustainability, Research methodology, which is a common module for everyone and it's preparing you for your thesis. Research group placement, design two, parametric design two, sustainable environmental design, design for a changing climate, BIM implementation in collaborative environments, innovative technologies and methods of construction, and the polarity design uh, coordination in BIM. And there are also three types of theses. We have the dissertation, which is a written dissertation, 12,000 words long. Research by design, which is a combination of 7,000 words and a piece of design, which is linked to the, to the research. Actually, it, it acts more like, let's say, um, um, an experiment to your design, if you can call it that way. And then we have the, the design thesis, which is purely design. And uh, this is for MA in architecture students only. And it basically offers you the, the possibility to design a complex building and submit a report of 5,000 words. Um, uh, MASMA, the Heritage Management, which is also accredited by the IHSPC, the Institute of Heritage in, in Britain, has a lot of uh, heritage-related modules, also from other departments like philosophy and history and theory. We have heritage perspectives and policies, heritage management, architectural and urban forms for Islamic uh, design in the Islamic world, Aesthetics, history and theories in architecture, which is a common module from EMA. Urban design, another set module. Virtual environments. You can see that there is a mix of, of uh, modules in all programs, and, and you will be able to meet and collaborate with students from all other programs. Semester two, heritage management and sustainable development, research methodology, heritage documentation, professional placement. That's a module where you actually can work for a museum for one semester and be placed there. International uh, records keeping, digital records, and philosophy of film. And these are the collaborating institutions. We have the National Museums of Liverpool, Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, Slate Museum of Wales, Victorian Gallery Museum, and uh, Port Sunlight Conservation Trust. And as I said before, you know, all the modules you choose, they lead you to the thesis, and, and that's basically a very good criterion in order to choose, more, to choose modules, is shaping your goal towards the thesis. So choose modules which will have you, help you, you know, um, proceed with a stronger thesis. I'm going to show you now some projects which are being produced uh, in, our, in our modules. This is the Design One uh, studio in MA in Architecture. We work um, in the first semester, we work with a smaller scale building uh, and the topic is um, inspired by nature. So we, we try to work with nature, being inspired by nature, and uh, in this case, they, they, they designed a small spa facility on a small island here um, in Liverpool. You see, uh, we, we work with, um, try to be high-end, um, you know, our design uh, skills and, and methods. Um, this is another spa facility, which is uh, somehow within the ground. 
inspired by uh, sponge, sea sponges and a porous space. And then in semester two, we, we proceed with um, urban context and we work in high rise buildings and more complex buildings. And in this case, we have um, a Tate Gallery extension. There is a Tate Gallery here in Liverpool. Another of those projects here in Liverpool in an urban context, you see. And then this is a thesis project, design thesis where students basically choose their own topic. In this case, uh, this lady coming from Shenzhen in China, she designed a city above the city and try to uh, upgrade a kind of problematic part of Shenzhen. Uh, other this is projects this is a housing uh, tower. Uh, we have an extension on um, on an existing industrial building here in Liverpool, which is a kind of office uh, hub for flexible working. We have an aquarium building here in, in, in Liverpool by the docks. Uh, other modules, which this is a module I'm teaching, is parametric fabrication one, and it's a shared module between um, MA in architecture, MSC BIM, and MSC Cresta. And here we work with 4D printing. We basically print in a pre stretched piece of textile by releasing it, as you can see here, it, uh, it self shapes and produces uh, shapes which are you know, following the rules of nature and the, power, the forces of, of, of the materiality. And then um, we design wearables and obviously we translate them also in larger scale. In, uh, in this last semester, because of the pandemic, we produce face masks, sleeping masks, and, and coffee cup holders. And you see there's always a textile and, and the elastic print which basically shapes the object. Another um, uh, shared module between MA in architecture, BIM and Cresta is robotic fabrication, which is in semester two. And there we work again with parametric tools and, and learn how to program robots in order to fabricate walls, uh, which is quite exciting and very, very useful. Uh, I, I'll stop it now and move to the other modules. Um, as this is a BIM module, which is also an elective um, for architecture, MA. And, and this is about uh, exploring BIM tools like Revit and Archicad and, and complexity and, and of that and how uh, basically what is ex expected in, in practice from a BIM coordinator. In this case, they were examining the classes between uh, different uh, BIM software. Here are some of the works which were actually produced this running semester. Again, here, uh, you know, the classes, classes reports. Um, another module shared between BMA and architecture and BIM is um, virtual environments where we work with um, virtual engines like Unreal Engine and also 3D Studio Max and produce um, visualizations and environments where you can really experience you know, the interior of them with VR, Oculus. Uh, another module uh, which is about uh, low and zero energy uh, is shared between Cresta and DMA. And here students are designing small buildings which are low and zero energy. In this case, it's a small cafe here in Liverpool, a zero energy cafe. There is also um, uh, another, uh, another stu uh, design studio module from Cresta and also shared for the MA where you design low and zero energy houses. Now, in um, um, heritage management, um, they do a lot of uh, field trips here in heritage institutions. And uh, here are some of the field trips they have done. It's uh, the program started actually this year. It's, it's a new program, it's uh, the first five students and visits here to Chester, the historic city, the sunlight, uh, poor sunlight, historic village. We do a lot of field trips. But that's uh, the first field trip we've done actually after the pandemic, we finally could do it. This is the MA in architecture. Again, we visited London. We do that always in semester one. And there we focus in visiting practices. We visit the AA, the Architectural Association, State Modern, Sahadid. This is the Sahadid office. We spoke with architects. Uh, Foster and Partners, where here again, this is Foster and Partners uh, talking to the architects. We had a visit in the office and could really see the, the project development. And since semester two, we usually do trips overseas. In this case, 
we went to Frankfurt and visited a German office, Neider Schumacher, very, very good office, and the European Central Bank. And here is actually um, um, uh, one of our students uh, got a job there. This is quite interesting. This is again at the visit at Foster's. And then we bring the people from the offices over to Liverpool for our reviews. In this case, this is uh, Kiriakos from Heatherwick Studio. So we really collaborate with high-end offices, international practices, and make sure that you get the best possible contact with people who will help you get a job and, and your skills will be relevant to the, what the market needs. This year, we're going to visit Amsterdam, actually, on Friday. We're very excited about it. We're going to visit uh, UN Studio, great office. We also visited Barcelona, Porto, uh, and, and so on. We have great facilities uh, in our school. The workshops are really, really fantastic. We have wood shops, we have um, plotting facilities, a robot, we have a CNC, uh, 3D printers, virtual reality rooms, a heliodome, and obviously Wi-Fi access and a computer suite. There are a lot of groups for you guys to get involved. Uh, lots of activities happening um, outside the curriculum, extracurriculum activities. You can see our, our groups, you know, we have a feminine group, a, a climate crisis group, group uh, um, racial discrimination group um, and so on and lots of events and people you can meet and, and get engaged uh, there are lectures and presentations uh, happening in the school uh, film screenings and there is always something to do and, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great place to be you can find this information in our website uh, I'm happy to pass on the presentation so you can actually um, have a closer look. This is where you can find all detailed information about our postgraduate programs. Uh, the MA has, in architecture, has its own website. This is uh, www.malsa.org.uk, where you can see current projects, uh, student activities, um, guest grades, and so on. Now, what do you need to apply? You need two letters of recommendation. You need a transcript of your <coughs> previous uh, degree a personal statement, a CV, and a 2.1 uh, average in your previous um, degree. Uh, now, I'm not sure what that translated in India. Uh, in any case, it's always good to say, include a portfolio. Uh, it's not necessary. If you have a very high mark, it's not necessary. If you have a mark below 2.1, uh, it's, it's definitely necessary to submit a portfolio. And then if you have a good portfolio, you, you will be admitted. Also, if people have working experience uh, or have, uh, are very strong in very particular modules, I would encourage you, even with a smaller mark, to write to the program director. Uh, BIM and Cresta don't require portfolios. BMA doesn't require a portfolio, but it's recommended to send a portfolio. Uh, but even there, by emailing the program directors, which is a list of people, you know, or emailing me, basically, um, if you have a strong... Um, interest and experience in a particular field, uh, there is a way to, to bypass the 2.1 uh, mark coverage requirement. An ILTS of 6.5 or 70% uh, of um, STDX2, I think this is uh, what India is, is related to, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong. Now, the fees are at £9,650 for uh, British students and 20,300 pounds for overseas students. But there are also quite a lot of um, scholarships and bursaries which you can look for and apply and uh, get uh, your funding sorted. It's not easy, but it is possible, right? But you, know, you definitely need a good mark and you need a good ILTS score in order to have a chance. Living costs in Liverpool are not very high. It's actually a very friendly city. It's, it's a, relatively small city for Indian standards, a, a, a good sized city to live. Um, you can get along with um, around eight and a half to ten and a half thousand pounds. Here is, you know, things, average prices um, uh, per month. So, you know, it's, it's actually quite a, a decent uh, place to be. It's a, it's a very lively city, lots of culture here. You have the football team, obviously, which you all know. We have the Beatles. There's a lot of culture. London is just two hours away. 
but then you're not in London, which is good because London is super expensive and crowded. So it's a, a great place to be. You can also talk about all these issues with our student ambassadors, which are students, um, usually alumni or current students. So you can speak with them and ask them questions which you might not want to ask me or, you know, which can be about simple things, practical things or general things. You can also find us in um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp. And uh, obviously there is a hashtag MA in Architects where you can follow our works and activities we're doing. Uh, you can contact me at a3lab at live.ac.uk or if you're here, I'm at room 2.17, but I guess you won't be here. Um, yeah, that's more or less it. I will stop sharing now so we can proceed with your questions. Students, yes. if you have any questions, kindly post it on the Q&A. Yes, please, yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative and interesting session. You're welcome. Uh, there are a few questions which were there uh, from uh, students which who had submitted at the time of registration. Can I float a few of them for Please. you? Please, yes. Okay. So, sir, because uh, you were talking about these specific courses, uh, like, uh, this with respect to sustainability, there was one question uh, by a student, if you can guide that person. Uh, she says, I want to study material sciences for sustainable construction. So what are the options and uh, how can I continue in the field of alternative building construction? Yes, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Thanks for that. I mean, uh, all, all of those um, sustainability modules, yes. there are four, they always include materiality. It's a very important factor and they work strongly with simulations. I think they're using um, design planner, I think it's called, where basically they are calculating thermal comforts and, uh, of all the materials. So materiality is a very important aspect of the program. But obviously, the best way to specialize is your thesis. So you are getting prepared. And also some of the other modules, I mean, the param parametric modules are also quite strongly related to materiality and construction. So you could form, you know, your curriculum by taking the mandatory modules, choosing some of the optional modules, and then focus with your thesis, which is a one semester, third semester long project, and really go deep into that. And then obviously the pathway, if you want to continue with the PhD, that's also another possibility. But the thesis will also give you a very deep knowledge because you will have your supervisor and then be able to really specialize in a very high level besides the knowledge you will gain in the top modules. Okay, sir. Uh, so there's one more question. Uh, a student wants to know, among all these courses that your university offers, uh, what are the very, uh, what are the more futuristic courses, like uh, which are emerging right now in a little nascent stage, yeah. but uh, they have a scope? Later. Actually, all of the programs are, 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 are made to, to fit the market requirements. I would just say that the MA gives you the possibility to specialize where you want. So you could have a bit of BIM, a bit of sustainability and design. But then we have, I have students who, you know, even go MA architecture and choose only technical modules or more theoretical modules. Definitely BIM is a very big upcoming thing because there are a lot of jobs in the field, but also sustainability is a very big field and, and gets a lot of jobs. So I would say you should follow your own interests. And if you're good at it and passionate about it, you will find the doorway to, to a job. Now, okay. there's no point choosing a master's which you don't feel you're interested in. So let's say, yeah, BIM is a good place to find a job. But if you don't like BIM, you shouldn't choose it. If you are more of a designer, you should rather become a strong designer and learn about robotics and about digital fabrication and, and, and about high end design, and then get the design job rather than taking BIM, which you don't like. Same goes for Cresta. If you, know, if you want to focus on sustainability, you don't need to be a good designer. So I would say all of the programs, also MASMA offers job opportunities, obviously in the, you know, the heritage uh, masters. 
uh, more in a, in, a, in a museum and, and uh, let's say, heritage environment. So all of the masters are, are competitive. It's up to you really to follow your own passion and your own dream. Yes, agreed, sir. So uh, there's another question on the portfolio requirements, like uh, what uh, are your suggestions or what are your guidelines in terms yeah. of how a student should, what, what are the key aspects that a student should focus upon while designing his or her portfolio? I would say, first thing, just send me a landscape portfolio, guys. Don't send me a portrait, right? Because, you know, we see it on the screen. That's one of the fatal errors. So let's start with the landscape format. Now, five, four to five projects are enough. They sh you should try to cover, you know, um, a, 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 as wide uh, as a spectrum as wide as possible, you know, from housing to whatever you have designed. But I don't need 20 projects, you know. Four to five projects are enough. And just do a, you know, clear uh, drawings, clear images. That's all. There's no magic recipe. It's It's... Show me what you can do. That's what I want to see. As long as it is in landscape format. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Any other questions? I have a quick question. Uh, so this is Hiranmay, one of the members of the global team. Uh, I'm also the professor here. Uh, regarding the BIM uh, uh, course itself, do you think as Indians, the, the course that we have over here uh, is, a, is enough or a good prerequisite to continue BIM at the master's yes. level in UK? Absolutely. Actually, most of the students in, in BIM are from India. This is okay. our most popular um, uh, origin. BIM is all, I mean, I think almost 60% are from India in, in the BIM mm -hmm. program. So, so it's I very can say we are with, uh, with yeah. India. So you're absolutely great prepared for it. And they're doing really, really well, all of them. That's nice too. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, any more questions? So if you could touch upon a little bit on the PhD. Uh, that's yeah. I mean, every year, almost one or two, sometimes three people um, continue to a PhD. I think um, this, all, all of the masters are good for you to, you know, find yourselves. I mean, at the beginning, the first semester, people are not really sure. I mean, they might have an idea, but it might be very abstract. A PhD needs to have a more focused idea. Uh, and, and I think this whole process of starting in semester one, where you choose your modules and then get to understand what's going on around you and learn new technologies and new topics. Semester two helps you to deepen your knowledge and then your thesis is actually uh, a very, very good place to start considering a PhD. Um, I think a good thing, if you, if you have studied here, you get also a discount in your PhD fees. So every mm -hmm. liberal graduate has a 10% discount, but that's always good. And then another aspect is obviously you meet the staff and then you can start talking with staff about a possible PhD. You can also start preparing uh, by applying for funding, by, um, you know, getting a, a good uh, mark, graduating with distinction would definitely help to get funding. So it's recommended, it's, 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 it's preparing you for a academic career, but there are also, you know, positions, research and positions in practices. I mean, all of those international practices we're collaborating, Zaha did, Foster and Partners, and which they have research units where they're actually really focusing on, on developing new materials, new technologies, new tools for design. So there is also a, a place for you in, in, in practice with the PhD. So it's, but it's something you need to want because it's a lot of writing. Uh, there is also a PhD by design, right? So that's for people who are stronger designers. There is also the PhD by design where you basically design something which could be, you know, could be a VR, a virtual reality yeah. tool, space, and so on. Um, and that's 
for, for more creative people, if I could call them as such. Uh, I hope I, I did answer your question. Yes. I currently have uh, seven PhD students, very interesting topics. I mean, uh, 3D printing, uh, concrete. We have uh, we're developing uh, currently um, also um, virtual reality for architectural uh, pedagogy. So how to integrate VR in, in our, uh, uh, and gamification we have digital heritage, this is, I'm mostly in the digital world, right? But, you know, there are a lot of special, specialized people in our school and you, you will definitely find the niche you want. Okay, sir, so this uh, last question asking on these same lines, like uh, in case of a PhD scholar, like how, how much is the probability of having a funding or uh, because Indian students, we usually do require some assistance in terms of financial aid. Yes, uh, I, the sooner you start, the, be the better it's going to be because you can start applying for funding while you're doing your master's. You need to apply. I mean, there are lots of funding bodies. Funding bodies. There is, there, are also, there is also funding available from the school, but it's usually linked to very particular topics. So okay. there are, there, for the moment, there is, I think, some funding for virtual reality uh, or immersive te technologies, I would call them. Augmented reality, but you know this changes. Uh, so next semester might be a funding more related to history and theory. You know, depends on on what grants the school wins. But uh, there are also so that means you you will have there are also lots of other funded PhDs in the UK. But again, they are linked to a research topic. That means you can start looking for that during your masters. If you want to do a, a very specific topic, topic only, that's usually not easy to be funded by somebody unless you apply for funding yourself. So that's always what you need to be aware of. You know, funding funded PhDs are linked to a topic. If you want a very specific topic, you will have to apply for funding yourself, and then your supervisors can help you. So your master supervisors can help you with your application. Okay. Understood, sir. Uh, so I think this is it from the question and answer session. It was a delight having you here with us uh, connected so well, and the session was very intriguing. Ms. Usha, I hand it over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank Professor, you. and thank you for the RV College Architects for giving us this opportunity to address your students. And I thank all the students who patiently you know, waited and listened and had a lot of questions. Hope this was very useful to you. If any students are looking forward to you know, make an application or help you with the application process, so I will share my details with Professor Vidya so you can connect with her and we can guide you further. Okay, thank you so much to all of you. And I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you so much. Also, if you if you want me to send you over the, uh, the presentation so you have all the links, I'm very happy to do that. Sure, so share it with me, Professor. It. I will share it with the professor uh, with the college. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. That would Thank be very you. helpful. Nice Thank to meet you. you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Usha. Thank you, Usha. Thank you so much. Thank you.